praise God. Well, as, uh, as you're joining us this morning, we're going to take time to pray before we pray over your prayer requests, that is. And then we're going to enter into uh, praise and worship. And then uh, we'll, we'll get into the Word today. We've got a full schedule ahead this morning. And know that with God, all things are possible. Can you say that with God? With God. All things. All things are possible. Are possible. You know, and not only are they possible, but they're highly likely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All things are possible to them what? To them who believe. Amen. Believe. And if you're a believer this morning, go ahead and say amen. Amen. I'm not just a I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer. Amen. Praise God. I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer. Amen. Amen. So this morning we choose to believe. We choose to walk in, uh, walk in the Spirit, and not fulfill the lust of our flesh. You know that old flesh. It uh, it can cause some, uh, not cause, but it can present some challenges. You know we got to be cautious how we see our flesh because our flesh really in itself has no has no power. Uh, this body is just skin and bone and ligaments and joints and blood vessels and muscle tissue and hair tissue and you know our, this this body really is nothing apart from the spirit that God breathed into Adam and breathed in the Ruach of God, the breath of God. He breathed in the life of God. And that life still flows and permeates man today. Now, thank God we've got a we've got a, a soul that has a personality, amen. Yeah. And I'm just waiting for some of you folks to kind of connect with us. And if you still have prayer requests this morning, please feel free to uh, to leave those prayer requests. We want to know that that we can be of service to you in prayer. You know, the scripture says, "Pray one for another that you may be healed." Right? Amen. So as we pray for one another, we're just believing God for His presence. It's, see, it's His presence that, uh, it's His power that does the healing. It's still Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who, who, who sees and hears and heals and He's faithful. Our God is a faithful God. Yes, he is. Praise God. Yes. So as you're, as you're joining us this morning, we're, we're thankful, thankful for you today. There's a there's a speaker going somewhere. Maybe it's uh oh, that's here. I didn't know that was on. I'm not even sure what it is. I'm gonna turn this off here. Praise the Lord. Oh, I see. Okay, that's uh Rick Renner. Ricky Renner. Praise God. Brother Rick. Brother Rick, Pastor Rick, and this morning as we get started, we are celebrating 458 months of wedding, of, of being married today. So not it's not a it's not an even year. It's not 38 years. It's not 39 years. Not 40 years. It's, we're not, not celebrating a year today. We're celebrating 458 months. That's Woo. exactly 38 years and two months. So congratulations, we've Aww. made it this far. Anniversary, Happy anniversary. Honey. Happy month anniversary. Amen. Monthly anniversary. <laughs> Monthly, month anniversary, right? <laughs> so we appreciate you all uh, that are saying congratulations on Facebook. And I, I hope you I hope you do know this is not a uh, a specific anniversary. I, I we like have to, a lot of anniversaries. Uh, you know, every day is an anniversary, right? We just love to celebrate, you know. And Woo! and if you spend your time celebrating and worshiping Jesus and, and acknowledging one another and loving one another then you know what doesn't give much room left for anything else to take place because if you're giving thanks all the time you, you don't have to you don't have time to do anything else amen That's good work <laughs> so there's some folks that are uh, joining us uh, good to see you Phyllis praise God you're a blessing yes, you pray are. that you're uh, that you're experiencing the, the joy of the Lord this morning you know uh, we appreciate those that uh, that join us even later in the week 
But uh, let me go ahead and look at our uh, look at our prayer request this morning. We want to go ahead and get started with that. Um, we just believe that God's got God's got some things He wants to do today, and we're just going to believe that He's going to do those things this morning. I just want to kind of lump in together some folks that uh, that have sent some. They just have acknowledged. Uh, that we do have the prayer request out there. I'm going to call out your first names. So let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with what? His courts praise. with praise. The scripture says to come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So just, Lord, we come to you this morning. Yes, we thank, you, thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, you we are, thank Lord. you, Lord, that uh, as we lift up Jesus' name, that, yeah. God, you are in our midst. You are here today. That our, I pray that you find our worship today acceptable and, and yes, praiseworthy Lord. today. That, God, you find it uh uh, you find the offerings, the sacrifice of praise to be a sweet-smelling savor in your presence. Lord, we just call out to you this morning, Leanne, Ron, yes. Kimberly, Brenda, uh, Pat, Corina, uh, yes, Mama Dean. We call out uh, these one, uh, Mama Eva Dean. We call her Mama Dean. We call out Mama Eva Dean this morning. Thank you for Shirley Kamer this morning. Uh, God, we thank you for the uh, for the McLaughlin family today that Lord as that, that you just touch them in a special way this morning that God you'll surround them this morning with with tender mercies and yes. compassion today Lord that as uh, as uh, the mother uh, Kim has gone on to to meet you that God uh, Rachel and the and the family will be encouraged today and as they reflect and, and as they grieve, but as they reflect upon Kim's life, thank you, Lord, that they find a servant, a, a, a person with a servant's heart that God has served and has served you well. So, Father, thank you for the, the legacy that Kim leaves yeah. uh, with her children and with her family. Thank you for the uh, for what she has meant to the body of Christ and to the friends that she has met uh, these past uh, past years. That God, she has just made an impact yes. upon so many that have known her and loved her. And Father, thank you today for those who have called special uh, prayer request needs this morning. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for for Pat. God, we just pray. That God, you'll minister to Pat in a special way this morning. That you'll wrap your arms around her and just show her how much you love her today. Lord, whether she sees this or not or is participating this morning or not, we just pray that she'll know that God, you are more than sufficient. That your grace is more than sufficient. God, we thank you for Amanda and for her mom today. God, we pray for Amanda's mom that, God, you'll touch her body. Give her strength. Give the family hope today. In Jesus' mighty name, mighty name. Lord, for Kay, she has an unspoken request. Lord, we pray for Kay and for this need that she's presented. God, you know the specifics of this issue. And God, we pray right now that your angels would go forth and as the, as ministering spirits sent forth for man, that they'll go and minister specifically to that need. God, for uh, Michelle, uh, favor at work for a raise. So, Father, we just pray that this week, we pray this week that God shall experience that, that raise that's been promised to her. Thank you for Michelle. We know Michelle is an awesome worker. She's a woman of God. Her and Ricky, that yes. God, they are amazing people yes. that just love you and thank and you, love to uh, lead in worship and, and and praise. So, Father, thank you that God, you favor, give her special favor at work for this raise in Jesus' name. Um, Leanne says uh, Miss Evadine wasn't feeling well last night so Father we thank you for 
for her once again. We lift her up to you and pray that God, as she 94 years old, Jesus, pray that God, her voice not be silenced, that while she has breath in her lungs, while she has breath in her lungs, while she's still making an impact with her prayers, that God, you just bring a healing and a cure to her in Jesus' name. God, we know you're more than able to do it. Father, thank you for for Jamie. Uh, God, we lift her up and thank you for, uh, God, just a new day, she says, facing a new day. Well, Lord, we all, we're facing a new day. So, Father, for, for, uh, for Jamie, we pray that God, she'll experience the love of Jesus in a precious and special way today. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Pray for a special touch from heaven in Jesus' name. Praise Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray for those that are watching and will watch, that they will know the significance, the value of their lives in you. God. Yes, yes. That, God, they are valuable while yes. we are valuable. Yes. Because you paid an awesome price for yes. us, Lord. Yes, yes. We just want to give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Let everyone know, Father, how valuable. Yes, Jesus. Yes. You truly are, God. Yes, Jesus. Thank you for uh, for Bobby McDaniel today, uh, Dina's father. Jesus. Lord, we take authority over this cancer in Jesus' name, the scourge that has been att- has been attacking his body. God, we just pray right now that you would touch his body, raise him up, O oh God. Lord, we're not commanding anything of you, but God, we are trusting that Jehovah Rapha is right there, right there wherever Bobby is to bring that healing and cure that he and Dina desire. Again, for for Kimberly, she, Lord, just requesting prayer and, and, and believe agreeing with us for others that... God, we know that as we pray one for another, that God, you said, pray one for another that you may be healed. So this morning, the friends, if you're if you're believing or if you have a need in your life, begin to pray for someone else. Begin to pray for someone else. If you need healing in your body, you pray for someone else to be healed. If you need a financial breakthrough in your life, pray that someone else has a financial breakthrough and even so a seed of finances into their into their life and i just say this just open this up we're not taking up an offering right now but if uh if you if you feel a, a just an an, uh, an urge on your heart a connection with us this morning and you want to give in to the work of victory here today uh, you can go to vwcdixon.org and then you can look for the link to give that's vwc victory worship center VWC Dixon, D-I-X-O-N dot O-R-G. And look for the link to give. If you if you feel a, a connection this morning, you sense that the Spirit of the Lord would uh, uh, put on your heart to, uh, to, to give this morning. And it's not just giving. You know, we don't give to God. We return to God what belongs to Him. So the tithe belongs to the Lord. So the tithe is not even ours. That, that 10%. Uh, is, is not even ours. It belongs to the Lord. We say, well, it all belongs to God. Yeah, it does. But he specifically calls out the tithe. And he says, give and it shall be given. Press down, shaken together and running over shall men return unto your bosom. Thank you. Well, you know what? This morning, we have tried that. We believe that. We trust God that his word is true. And he's faithful to his word today. You know, he said in Psalms, he said is that he has, he has elevated his word even above his name. Jesus, wow, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's really saying something this morning. He's elevated his word even above his name, and we know that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So at the same time, he said, "My word, yeah, I've elevated even above my name." Wow, that's like that's like uh, there's a contract that's been written for you and I. Yeah, and then at the bottom, Jesus signs it in His blood. Isn't that powerful? Yeah, it is. Curry says, pray for me. Having problems with my mouth and throat from the chemo. Well, Lord, we pray right now. Pray right now. I'm going to lay hands on my throat as a point of contact for you, Curry. 
Father, we pray right now for Curry's throat. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that he'll experience a healing, a touch of God in his throat. That, Father, he'll experience your healing power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it. Curry, just receive that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just say, that's mine. It's mine. Hey, Amen. If you need, if you're listening and, and you're needing a healing, in your, just say, that's mine. I receive it. Amen. You know, it, it's one thing to pray for somebody, but if you don't receive it, then the praying is kind of in vain. Come on. So we can pray and exercise. We've got to. We can pray and exercise our faith all day. But if you don't receive, then it's it's for nothing. See, that's where a scripture in James says, "You have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask amiss." Wanda says an unspoken need. So, Father, we lift up uh, Wanda and Brenda. Both have have an unspoken need here this morning. Lord, we lift up these unspoken needs well able. Yes, right now. and trust, trust you, Father. We trust you, Lord, in Jesus' name, to meet those unspoken yes, needs. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we're trusting you this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we're just giving you all the glory today. Worthy, Thank you. Worthy, greater is he that's in us. Can you say that with me this morning, those of you that are watching? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's 1 John 4, 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brenda, Wanda, again for uh, Kay. Lord, these unspoken needs that have been presented. God, you know, you know what those needs are. And yes, we like to have specifics about, about uh, some needs. But God, we don't have to uh, be detailed about everything that we're requesting uh, with one another specifically. Necessarily, it does help to pray. But God, you know specifically what's going on Holy in these Spirit families. Knows, yeah. Holy Spirit, we just ask right now for a spirit of comfort to come over each one. Yes, that the Lord, Spirit yes, of wisdom... Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you would come forth in Jesus' name. Well, the scripture, Hallelujah. Mike, uh, yep. in uh, Romans says that yes. uh, the Spirit knows the feeling of our infirmities and yes, he prays and makes intercession. Praise for makes them. intercession for us. So let's just allow the Holy Spirit to make intercession for us this morning, huh? Hallelujah. Lord, we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you said, Jesus, that I have come, that you might have and enjoy life, hallelujah, yes. in abundance to the full till it overflows. So Lord, everything that's coming to contradict that mission of yours, we thank you that we recognize that it's not from you, Father, that there is an adversary yes, Lord. that seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that every yoke be bound, that every chain and yes. fetter be broken off of the people of God, name, that their eyes would be open to see, that they receive wisdom from on high, that, God, they would know what is the hope of their calling of God in yes. Christ. Hallelujah. You know, God has called you today to be free. Yes, amen. And, you know, I just as a, as a short short testimony here I'm going to try to be short but as I was getting ready this morning and some thoughts came flooding my mind from gosh from 40 years ago here I am 61 now but uh, you know I think you know when we see some of these TV shows that we do they kind of uh, stir up memories, they stir up thoughts, they stir up passions or emotions in us. And, you know, I was just these images. The past, you know, the past may not always play as a video. It may just play as an image. And those images, if, if they come to steal, kill, and destroy your peace, they come to steal, kill, and destroy your joy, if they come to steal, kill, and destroy your your, your peace of mind 
and, and, and come to wreck your heart and your faith. We, you know what we have to do? We have to cast those imaginations down. Yeah. You say, no, I reject that image. I reject that image. I reject that image. That low thing, I, I reject you in Jesus' name. We have, to re, we have to physically renounce and reject those things. Yeah, that's good. Because when those thoughts come to your mind, they're right. coming to steal your joy. They're come coming on, to steal you of your, rob you of your peace. Yeah. See, because in Christ, yeah. we're supposed to be at perfect peace. And, and in the Old Testament, it tells us that, that they would be kept in perfect peace whose mind is stayed up on the Lord. It's when our mind gets off of the Lord with those images, with those emotions attached to those images, with the stirring of what those images try to do. Those, those images try to stir up things in us and make us think, oh gosh, there's no hope for me. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hopeless addict. I'm a, I'm a hopeless this, or I'm a hopeless that. No, you know what? You're not hopeless in Christ. You are more than a conqueror through him who loves you. My friend, you, you gotta receive that, that word. Because in Christ, that's who you are. Satan comes to remind you of your past. And every time he does, I like what somebody said, if, if, when Satan comes to remind you of your past, remind him of his future. Well, uh, that's great. But also, reject those images. Reject those emotions. Because that's not you anymore. Amen. That's not you anymore. You're not, you're not a hopeless addict. You're not a hopeless thief. You're not a hopeless whatever this, mm -hmm. the enemy tries to remind you of your hope is now in God yeah stand on that yeah. trust that believe that let, you know you can recognize let that it, heal honey. you in Jesus name you can recognize it by Amen. condemnation praise God yeah it'll it'll make you feel condemned, condemned and, or pushed and down. rejected and it, when those feelings come those feelings are not of God they're not even of you they're of the enemy who wants to destroy your faith and destroy praise you. god let's go ahead so, and if god. you want to uh if you want to praise god amen if you want to uh, join us in worship this morning please stay with us and uh, we'll get into the word here in just a minute but we're gonna just take a moment just to worship the lord and to lift up the name of jesus amen amen come on donna let's uh let's lift up jesus hallelujah hallelujah Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't she pretty today? Hallelujah. <laughs> Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word.
just the sheep of his hand for you alone are our God you are the people we are the people of his hand. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, how can we uh, maintain our joy and peace in the midst of a crazy, mixed up world? <laughs> well, simple, simply put, Stay close to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Just uh, just stay close to Jesus. Keep looking up. Keep your heart fixed on Him. Don't let the, the issues in this life distract us. You know, it's easy to get distracted in the, in the world today, but you know what? We can't, we can't let it happen got to stay focused upon what's important what's truly important is our relationship with with our father our heavenly father I know there's a lot of folks even myself that we didn't know a natural father we didn't have a natural father and you know when people talk about having a good good God good good father as the scripture goes that Chris Tomlin wrote uh, I believe it was Chris Tomlin he sang it uh, but you know I said uh, I have a good, good father. Well, I, I never really, uh, I never really understood what it was like to have a father. But at the same time, I think because of my early experience in a in a little church that no one was even in the room with me. I was in the sanctuary by myself and just uh, crying out and in prayer and you know just in my you know little 10 year old way uh just uh sitting there by myself and thinking of all the things that was going on in my world and i i think i the seed of a good good father was sown in my heart in those times and you know 
the sad thing is is if we're not watchful we'll think that the only place that we can experience God is in a sanctuary in a church building and that's just not true because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit that wherever we go he is because greater is he that what is in me first John 4 4 look it up if you don't believe me but first John 4 4 greater is he that is in us in me than he that is in the world so you know we don't have to go to a place in order to experience God but when you go to a place that we set aside as a place of worship yeah you should experience a touch of God and and, and I believe that through the years many have come in to, to Victory Victory Worship Center here in Dixon and you know even the most uh, uh, had one one fella a, a biker a truck driver he came in with his wife and sat over to my left and you know just saw the tears in his eyes and he said I feel Jesus here you know what Jesus never left Jesus is still here the Holy Spirit is still here so whatever we have need of today I, I pray that you'll you'll make the the journey into fellowship with us if you don't have a home church if you do have a home church you need to get your bottom in there and go and support your pastor and and uh, you know it's, it's a for, it's right Hebrews 10 you know I think uh, it's funny uh, sometimes we we like some of scripture but we don't always like all of it and we pick and we cherry pick which ones we want which scriptures we want to use and which ones we don't want to use and and uh, you know I know there are some people that are bed fast or some people that uh, that are dealing with sickness in their bodies and we we pray and believe God for you to be raised up because your best experience with the body of Christ is to be connected to it in a vital and and uh, in, in a tangible way you know so if you think me asking you to be a part of us and being here in the flesh is is a is an opportunity to get money out of you you know leave your purse at home <laughs> leave your wallet at home if you think that I just want you here to be to be uh, uh, to, to get your money uh, you know you could easily send your money on the website that I mentioned vwcdixon.org you go there click on the link to give most everybody's got a credit card today uh, and uh, you know you can easily give there and if you don't hey you're, you're welcome to eat a free meal with us today we're not gonna we're not gonna charge you for the meal uh, but I'll say this you don't go to McDonald's and pay at Burger King you don't eat off the menu at McDonald's and pay at Burger King so just a just a food for thought if you will see la pause and ponder what I really want to talk to you about and it's uh, getting back to what we mentioned and talk to uh, talked about a couple of weeks ago is overcoming a critical spirit I want to quickly go through some of what we'd already mentioned and try to take advantage of the time we have here and not waste our time the results of a critical spirit are this it hinders our relationship with others you can find that in Proverbs 15 1 a gentle answer turns away wrath but harsh words stir up anger so a critical spirit is going to be one that will stir up anger in people uh, a critical spirit hurts others in Matthew 7 3 through 5 and why worry about the speck that's in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own how can you think of saying let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye brother when you can't see past the log that's in your own eye you hypocrite first get the get rid of the log from your own eye then perhaps you will see enough see well enough to deal with the speck that's in your own eye so you know our, our critical uh, a critical spirit will affect others a critical spirit hurts me Proverbs 11 2 when pride comes there comes shame but with the lowly is wisdom when pride comes then comes shame so uh, having a critical spirit really is connected to pride in that hey uh, you know I I'm I'm not 
hurting anybody by my judgment. You know, I just want to, I just want to spread what I think and, 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 and uh, you know, we're setting ourselves up to be the, the judge and jury. Um, and some will even say, and this is kind of, I find it kind of humorous, even if it's, even though it's sad, but some will say, well, I'm just coming against your doctor and I'm not coming against you personally. Oh, you hypocrite. You hypocrite. You're not coming against anybody's doctrine. You're coming against uh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, hallelujah. Well, you know, a prideful spirit uh, comes to shame. Comes to shame. If you want to if you want to talk to somebody about that, talk to Satan and realize, hey, you know what? Uh, Satan thought he was going to usurp authority in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. He thought he was going to ascend his his throne was going to ascend above that which was God's and he was going to take authority over heaven. Well, you know what happened? Boom. We saw Satan fall as lightning. Huh? Come on now. That was kind of the that was the response that Jesus gave to the disciples when they come to him and said, "Oh, Jesus, wow, we was able to cast out demons and heal the sick. We was able to do all these wonderful works." And and Jesus, you know what Jesus' response was? This is uh, you know, you think sometimes Jesus wasn't on topic when he would respond to something, but he was very much on topic whenever he would respond. What did Jesus say? He said, I saw Satan fall as lightning. That was Jesus' response to the disciples when they come back talking about what they had done when Jesus sent them out in pairs to do the works that he did, the works that Jesus did, the disciples went on and did. Hallelujah. And you know what? Uh, the ministry of Jesus is not concluded, has not concluded. The ministry of Jesus is not finished. Jesus is still healing today, and he's using you and I, people just like you and I, to go and pray for the sick. He's using you and I to go and preach the gospel. Without, without, the, uh, without a preacher, how will they hear? And if they, can't, if they don't hear, how are they going to make a decision to follow Christ? Well, you know what? You and I will go into all the world. We'll preach the gospel. We'll lay hands on the sick, see them recover. We'll speak with new tongues. And if, hallelujah, uh, mm, we could just spend an hour on just that topic right there. But a critical spirit akin to, closely connected to pride, what happens is it brings shame. Ultimately, it brings shame. You may think, well, I'm not, you know, I'll get, I, it's not going to, it doesn't shame me to shame others. It doesn't shame me to be critical. Oh, yeah, it, it does. And if it doesn't right now, it will later. And if it doesn't in this life, and you keep, you hold on to that critical spirit, and you hang on to that pride, you know what? In the end, you're going to lose out. You won't even know. No. You won't know him. He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. It hinders my relationship with God when I have a critical spirit. In Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity, a critical spirit, harsh judgment in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You ever wonder when you look around and you say, wow, you know, we've been praying, been praying, and, and, and it just it's as though the heavens are brass. Well, could it be that we're trying to we're trying to sow mingled seed. We're trying to pray the prayer of faith, and at the same time, we're holding on to a judgmental, critical spirit towards somebody. We're holding on to unforgiveness. Is there anybody you know in your life that has a, has a, has come against you, has, has spoken evil of you, and, and every time you think of that person, you, your skin crawls? Well, you know what? You probably have not forgiven. And I'll just be honest with you, there have, people, there have been people that have uh, done things uh, to me and to Donna and have said some horrible things and done some horrible things. But you know what? When their memory comes to my thoughts, when, they're, when the image of them comes to my thoughts, it, I have a choice. I'm either going to accept that and get angry with them or I'm going to accept that and I'm going to pray for them. I have a choice. I have a choice. I can let it hinder my relationship with God by allowing critical, a critical attitude and a critical heart to uh, begin to judge that person. And, and, you know, I can even pray, oh, God, deal with them. You know, 
uh, they've hurt me. Uh, you know, pray. You know, in the Old Testament, pray that uh, uh, that things would come upon the enemies of Israel. Well, you know what? We pray for the enemies that we encounter. We pray that God will save them, that God will deliver them, that God will heal them because we don't want to be connected to the deceiver. We don't want to be connected to the one who is stealing, killing, and destroying. Even though somebody may do us wrong, it doesn't give us a right to retaliate. Huh. Uh, we was watching a show last night and and uh, uh, the the place where these guys were meeting, I'm not going to be too specific about it, but the place where these guys were meeting uh, got trashed and just destroyed. And, uh, you know, it was a kind of a hazing sort of a thing. Well, then uh, some boys got together and they decided they were going to have revenge upon, uh, upon the person who did this uh, thing. And the people that did it, in particular one person. Well, they went and several of the guys going to jump out. They're, they're trashing property of somebody else. And then the next thing you know, uh, the one boy who had the most anger, his anger began to take over. And he, he went, he went it, yeah, it became a rage where he was just like, I don't want to just do some damage. I want to destroy and, and it's because this, this young man had a lot of anger and rage built up from all that he was going through in his life. And you know what? We don't want it to get to that point because it does hinder our relationship with God when we take things into our own hands, when we begin to be critical and harsh in our judgment. It stops God's blessing in our life. Proverbs 28, 13, I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. It says, people who cover their own sins will not prosper, but if they confess and forsake them, they will receive mercy. Mercy. People who cover their sins will not prosper. We can't hide from God. We may think I'm hiding from somebody and, and I'm not experiencing judgment from a person, but you know what? That's it's not the person, it's not people around us that we need to be concerned about. It's our Father God. Is our life pleasing to Him? Is the choices we're making pleasing to Him? If we do not forsake our sin, if we do not repent, and you know what? You may have to repent over and over again for the same thing. And I tell you, if you don't repent and you don't seek uh, uh, forgiveness. You don't. You don't ask God to forgive you. You don't repent and come back to God and say, "You know, I, the the thing I would do, I I don't do. The thing I don't want to do, I do." Lord, help. See, that was the Apostle Paul's mentality. Is he would come back to God and say, "Lord, this thing I'm doing, I don't want to do. The thing that I don't want to do, I do. Help." So there is a continual uh, cleansing. I pray often, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. I'm not saying the spirit that he gave me is wrong. I'm saying that my soul needs continual healing. My soul needs continual refreshing. That's why we pray like David did. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. We don't never want to get to the place in our relationship with the Lord where we just say, oh, you know, I had a bad thought. No big deal. Oh, I said a bad, I, I said something I shouldn't have said. Oh, no big deal. Oh, I, 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 you know, I'm talking about this one or I'm talking about that one. It's no big deal. You know what? It is a big deal. These things are a big deal. And when we catch ourselves, I want to be like, I want to be like this. As soon as I recognize, as soon as the Holy Spirit quickens my heart and says, Mike, nope. I started to get on Facebook the other day and make a post about something. I felt that nudge of the Holy Spirit that said, really? And I, I, when, I, when I felt that nudge in my spirit, I was like, because it was, I didn't feel that I was going to be critical but if what I was going to say could be taken critically, 
by the person I might be or not, might or might not be aiming something at someone particular. But if it can be taken critically, it's one thing when it's the word and, you know, we're talking about the word, but when it's another thing, when it comes to uh, defining hurt, defining how I've been affected, defining how I've been impacted by something, I, I got to be cautious defining how I get impacted about something. Because I could be aiming a fiery dart at somebody. And that's not, that's not God. Jesus never aimed fiery darts. He just come out and said, you brood of vipers. He would just come right out and, and confront them directly. Well, until the Apostle Paul came along and said, you need to mark them who cause, you know, you know, do these things that, that cause a division among you. Mark them. Well, you know what? Uh, if, we, if we all go around marking each other, I'm not saying the Apostle Paul was wrong. What I am saying is, if you're going to go around and mark somebody, make sure you mark everybody. Make sure you mark everybody you don't agree with. And then, and it, you know, but the thing is, every time you mark somebody, you're 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 saying that uh, they are not worthy of your time. I uh, even had somebody say, "Well, I cry and I pray and and all this for you." You know what? Um, I hope you really are. Let's move on before I begin to get critical. <laughs> the consequences of a critical spirit are real, and it's easy to get others to listen and agree. There's no shortage of critical, hurting people in the world today. Social media has become a place where people can say anything to anyone and feel like they can get away with it. If you share a different thought or opinion or even a scripture to a person with a critical spirit, they will always have a sharp, witty comeback and will even accuse you of being judgmental and narrow-minded. They can even become verbally abusive. Can I say something once again to us, folks? If you've said something to someone or you said something about someone, or you said something that you don't agree with, and you have to say it more than twice, I would say you got a problem. If you have to keep posting the same things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, I'd say you're, I'd say you're fixated on something. You got a fixation problem. You're not trying to help the body of Christ. You're just trying to, trying to be a, a divisive. It becomes divisive when you have to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. You become an accuser, you become an accuser of the brethren, amen. And, and you got to have to see, you can't even say that anymore because yeah, because true. these people don't think that they're brethren. Yeah, I, I I hear what Donna's saying here, but you know what? That's why it's it's best when it comes to people who are uh, who are not in agreement. Hey. Okay, you've got a church over there you're dealing with. You all get together and talk about the other people together in your little community. Just keep your little community over there. We'll keep our little community over here, and we'll pray for you. Amen. i got to be cautious. <laughs> I know <laughs> she don't understand what I'm saying, but I pray that God will help us understand. Because if you don't, if you don't, if you don't have if you don't have the ability to come into agreement with somebody then then it's best that you not join up with them because how to how can two walk together unless they agree that's the point and that's why we have baptist methodist catholic uh, presbyterian uh pentecostal charismatic word of faith that's why we have all these different flavors of the kingdom because we can't all agree so we're, we, we might as well stay within our area of agreement so that at least hopefully we can get something done for God. Because there's not going to be anything done that's useful in the kingdom if we're at odds with one another. That's why we need to, hey, brother, let's go, and, let's go and pray for the sick. Well, if you don't believe in praying for the sick, then don't pray for the sick. But let me find somebody that will go and pray with me. If Hey, let's go lead somebody to the Lord today. Well, do we, do we have water to baptize with as soon as we get them saved? Well, we might not have water, but we can get it as soon as we can. You know, hey, we've got to find people that we can walk in agreement with and then work out. 
You know, Scripture tells us to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. I think part of that is shunning a critical spirit. How does, how does the transformation from being critical, hurting others, hurting ourselves, uh, short, uh, short-circuiting the blessing of God upon our life, how, where do we start? It starts with me. It starts with me, like the psalmist David said in Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. He says in the New Living Translation, Search me, O God, that every day, every day, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. It starts right there. It starts right there. Search me. Search me. Proverbs 28, 13, and 14. Confess my sin. People who cover their cover over their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and forsake them. See, it's not enough just to confess that we have sin. We have to confess and forsake them. That's not just an Old Testament concept. And we're not talking about whether you will or will not go to heaven. We're just simply talking. Because it could. It could make a difference whether you go to heaven or hell, wherever you're going to go. Could make a difference. But people who cover over their sins will not prosper. If they confess and forsake them, they will receive mercy. Blessed are those who have a tender conscience, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. That's straight out of Proverbs 28, verses 13 and 14 in the New Living Translation. I want to read that last part again. Blessed, blessed, happy... (laughs) are those who have a tender conscience, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. And again, I'm going to stop right here where I stopped two weeks ago because I've basically gone over the same message, but I'm trying to add some uh, new life to it. Holy Spirit, just help add some new life to this this message. Change my way of thinking. What I'm saying is, if I see a hint of a critical spirit in me, how can I change? It starts with me. Holy Spirit, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Show me myself, O oh God. When he shows us the things that need to be repented of, then we repent. We confess our sin. We repent of those things and forsake them. We don't keep going on in the same direction expecting something different to come. Philippians 2, 1 through 8. I'm going to wrap it up after this. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? We're talking about changing my thinking, changing our thinking. Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and sympathetic? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one heart and purpose. And what would that purpose be? The scripture tells us that it's not God's will that any should perish. In Romans, Paul tells us that how shall they how shall they call upon the name of the Lord unless one is sent? See, there's people that have not heard the gospel yet. There are young people that have not heard the gospel because their parents didn't raise them in church, because they they haven't developed a relationship with the Lord on their own. You know, the, there's reasons that people today 
are hearing the gospel for the first time, just like back in the late 60s, like in the 60s when, you know, people were saying, I've never heard this before, when the Jesus movement began to, began to, uh, uh, began to explode, and, and, and we call it the Jesus movement now, but uh, who was it? Uh, um, um, Billy Graham said it was a Jesus revolution. He called it a Jesus revolution. And there were young people that were saying, I've never heard the good news before. I've never heard the gospel before. So what's the purpose? Preach the gospel. Take the gospel to the lost and hurting. Don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourself. Don't think only about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and what they are doing. Your attitude should be the same that Christ Jesus had. Your attitude. This is the, this is the point here. How do, how do I change my thinking? We change our thinking by changing our attitude. See, Jesus could have came to earth and, and acted like God. He could have acted, he could have just said, you know, hey, I'm God, here I sh I've just showed up. No, he didn't come to say he was, he didn't come and proclaim that he was God. He, he came and, and declared the, the gospel. He showed how to live out this walk of faith that we live. He came to be an example and he came to be a sacrifice. He, he laid everything down and took up his cross. Though he was God, he did not demand and cling to his rights as God. Verse 6. Verse 7. He made himself nothing. He took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. And in human form, he obediently humbled himself further by denying by, by dying, rather, a criminal's death on a cross. Let me read that verse and then go back to verse 1 and tie these two together. So I'm going to read... I'm going to start, let me do this. Let me start at verse 7. Are you with me there? Start at verse 7. I'm going to read verse 8, and then I'm going to go back and read verse 1. He made himself nothing. He took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. And in human form, he obediently humbled himself. He obediently humbled himself. Obedient? Who was he obedient to? obedient to the Father. He was obedient to the plan. Obediently humbled himself even further by dying a criminal's death on a cross. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and sympathetic? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one heart and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble. What, how, by what? Obedient, Jesus obediently humbled himself. Paul says, he says, be humble, thinking of yourself, thinking of others as better than yourself. Let me just stop there and, and close in, in prayer. And I, I, got a, I got a confession, a closing prayer that I, I want to pray. And, you know, my, my, message is, my message today is not meant to uh, not meant to bring you down or to make you feel bad. It's, I, sh I always feel like every time we gather, we should get something that causes our life to look a little more like Jesus. You may not get everything that's been said today, but I believe the, the words of Paul in Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, give us an example of of what we should be shooting for. We should always be shooting for something in God, not just coasting through life, 
with no expectations, no dreams, no vision. Get a vision for walking like Jesus. Get a vision. You know, not trying to set goals. You know, we're still, you know, we're in the third month of 2023, and a lot of people make uh, resolutions. A lot of people uh, set goals. You know, January 1st. You know, you've you've made all these goals. You you've made all these resolutions, and then by uh, by the third week of the month. Um, kind of gotten tired of them and haven't followed through some people are you know hey really after it they'll stay with it all through february about march april may when uh, you're able to get outside more and do some things outside more and get distracted by other things it's 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 easy for the 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 the, the goals for the resolutions to just kind of fade away but i'm not talking about making resolutions i'm not talking about simply making a goal. I'm talking about getting a vision. See, the the people run wild that have no vision, Proverbs says. Where there is no vision, the people perish. There's a version that talks about, uh, of that verse, it says uh, that where there is no vision, the people are, are as untamed stallions running wild that's a pretty vivid picture of of uh, just an unbridled spirit but see we can bridle this soul that we have we have the ability to do this because what greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world but let's pray this prayer together and, and if you don't know the Lord today This is the gospel. Admit that you have sinned. Scripture tells us that if we say we have no sin, we've, we've deceived ourselves and we're a liar. So yeah, say, well, we all sin. Don't judge me because I sin differently than you. Whatever. You know what? Every day, we have an opportunity to grow closer to Jesus and loose the bands of those sins and those weights that so easily beset us. But if you don't know the Lord today, simply admit, yes, I have sinned and I am sorry for my sin. I've tried a million times to stop what I'm doing. You say, okay, Lord, here's that. Then believe. Believe what? believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Believe that God had the power to raise Jesus from the dead. Do you believe that today? Just a simple belief. Do you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead? See, there's power in the resurrection. And then thirdly, Romans 10 tells us hey, that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to challenge you to go and read Romans chapter 10 when you get a chance. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you, you want to call upon the name of the Lord today? Let's do that right now before I do this closing prayer. Say, Father, Father, I have sinned. I have sinned. I'm so sorry for my sin. I'm so sorry for my sin. My sin shames me. My sin shames me. And grieves me. And grieves me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I believe. I believe. That Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. I believe he sh his blood was shed for me. I believe his blood was shed for me. I believe that you raised him from the dead, Father. I believe that you raised him from the dead, Father. Now, Lord, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. Lord. I confess that Jesus is my Lord. Now, Lord, I ask you. I ask you, Lord. To help me to grow. Help me to grow. In the things of God. In the things of God. Show me how to live this life. Show me how to live this life. So that I can be pleasing to you. So that I can be pleasing to you. 
in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Now, yes. Father, I pray that you would surround this one with believers who have a heart to know you and that this this these will uh, seek out a church home that God will, will love on them and show them the way of Christ. Yes. Now, this is the closing prayer I want to pray for, pray with us all. And if you've just accepted the Lord for the first time, praise God. That's awesome. Lord, show me my own heart, not the person beside me. Show me my own heart. Yeah. And if you want, just agree with me. If you don't say the words the way I say them, that's fine. Just agree. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, okay. yes, I agree. Lord, show me my own heart. Lord, show me my own heart. Not the person beside me. Not the person beside me. Show me my heart. Show me my heart, Lord. Show me the ways I've been critical toward others. Show me others. the ways I've been critical towards others. Give me courage. Give me the courage. Lord. The courage I need. The courage to I repent need. and show mercy. To repent and show Lord, mercy. your word says. Lord, your word if says. If I want mercy, if I, want I must mercy, show mercy. I must show if mercy. I want forgiveness, I want. Forgiveness, I must forgive. I must forgive. Show me where I've allowed pride. Show me where I've allowed pride. To live in my heart. I forgive those who have offended me. I forgive those who I forgive those who have hurt me. I forgive those who I forgive and release them to you. I forgive and release those Show them how much you love them. Show them how much you love them. Cause them to prosper and be in health. Cause them to prosper and be in health. As they prosper in you. As they prosper in you. Right now. Right now. I humble myself. I humble myself. And thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I reject pride. I reject pride and a critical spirit and a critical spirit and ask you Lord ask you Lord to fill me with a tender heart full of love fill me with a tender heart full of love help me to walk this out help me to walk this out Lord to love others to love others in Jesus name in Jesus name amen praise God ha 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 well this this is a new day for us amen and we're believing that as we prayed when we first started the service, that those of you that have uh, have specific needs, that we're believing that God is is working on your behalf. Those of you that accepted the Lord for the first time, we're happy for you and rejoice with you. Amen. Those that are seeking a closer relationship with the Lord, we rejoice with you because we want a closer relationship with the Lord too. We don't want to just live a casual Christian life. Amen. Amen. As Donna plays while we close the service today, we want you to know that we love you. We're praying for you. And if uh, if you are able to, join us in person here at Victory Worship Center in Dixon, Kentucky. Amen. All sufficient sacrifice. a price heaven's gates now are open wide there's power in the name of Jesus there's power Every chain, every chain, every chain.